Dear Peddlers, in this video I will do a comparison of two touring pedal boards. They use the latest woven drop stitch technology. Uh, they are top cl class quality and the manufacturers are the American Starboard and the Czech Tambo. I did the review in Albania on the beautiful River Viosa. The reviewed boards are uh, the one on the very right side uh, with the with the red side and front and the one in the middle the blue one in the middle starboard has a wide range of uh, touring pedal boards uh, the the woven drop stitch, drop stitch technology is labeled in their case with d in the name d standing for deluxe DSC Deluxe Single Chamber, so that's the woven drop stitch technology. Uh, so please look for DSC uh, on uh, the starboard touring pedal boards, and uh, they have touring M and touring S. In the DSC category, we used touring M. The touring S is slightly narrower. Both reviewed uh, pedal boards have similar sizes uh, 2.6 inch 380 centimeters long and uh, starboard has 30 inch that 76 centimeters width and uh, tambo has 90 29 inch that's uh, 73 centimeters uh, on this video they seem to be identical but that's because i inflated uh, the tambo to 10 psi and starboard only to 4 because I, I was just testing some equipment on it they were not inflated to the same pressure that's why it looks uh, similar tambo is slightly narrower when it comes to the weight um, both manufacturers say the weight is around 9.5 kilograms. Uh, my measurements with the kitchen scale uh, for Tambo were 8.8, 8.9 and 9.0. So it is slightly less than, uh, than what they have on their website, which is normal. There is 5% variance in, uh, in the manufacturing process. That's uh, okay. Uh, I cannot provide my own measurement of starboard because I already changed a lot on it uh, compared to when it was new. I attached a secondary US fin box, for example, I removed the bungees, I added something and so on. So I cannot really measure it, but uh, manufacturers provide the same values. In my perception, the tambo feels a bit lighter. The outline is not identical. Um, Stambo is slightly wider at the base, and um, and uh, starboard is slightly wider in front. Um, and one other difference is that uh, starboard is completely flat uh, all the way through the whole length of the pedal board, and. Tambo has a slightly lifted nose, the so-called rocker. Uh, it is lifted, lifted just a bit and the rocker is also short, uh, but there is some difference between those two. This is just to give you a perspective uh, how it looks like compared to other, pe other pedal boards. The one on the right side is 33 inch, that's uh, 84 centimeters wide. Then we have Tambo Discovery and uh, Starboard Touring, the both uh, touring pedal boards with 29 and 30 inch respectively. And on the left side is a 27.5, that's 70 centimeters wide racing pedal boards. So you can see that the difference is actually quite big in the width. Here again, I'm trying to show the differences in the outline. Starboard, starboard on bottom is wider in front. It has a more hydrodynamic shape and is narrow in the back. Tumble Discovery, on the other hand, is more like an arrow. Uh, it is uh, sharp at the, at the end and wide at the base. One important topic in this review are the fins. This is starboard with its uh, US fin and tambo with its three fixed fins. 
Uh, that, that's the biggest difference uh, among those two pedal boards, by the way. And here also you can see that starboard is completely flat and tambo almost, but not quite. And once, once again, the differences in the outline. I would like to focus on three performance categories. Uh, one is the straight line tracking uh, or the ability of the pedal board to make a quick turn. The second is the so-called lateral stability. That is how, how much the pedal board dances below your feet, how much you need to stabilize it in order not to fall. And the third one is the glide. Glide is when you do a pedal stroke, how many meters do you cover? How good does it move across the water? In these videos, I'm trying to demonstrate how much work it is to uh, get the pedal board to make a turn. Mm, you see starboard takes a lot of effort. If I do this uh, basic beginner style, mm, tambo will be much easier to turn around. If it is good or bad, we will come back to it later, but uh, just to show you that tambo is uh, more responsive. If you want to turn it around, it is easier to be done. On this other exercise here, I'm trying to uh, just change the direction a couple of times and uh, you know change the side on which I pedal and so on to show you the lateral stability, how, how much the pedal board is shaking below my feet. Um, it is difficult to show on video, but starboard is actually better in this regard because it is wider in the beginning, even though on this video you can see the opposite. Uh, starboard has that bigger fin which and the fin goes deeper it has big surface area it goes deeper it helps a lot with stability and um, also starboard is wider uh, in front it is flat uh, this all helps with the lateral stability so starboard feels more like a tank and tambo discovery feels more like a toy you know it's uh, it's doing what you want as for the glide, as for how good the pedal board moves forward, I have some surprising news for you. I personally don't use touring pedal boards for touring trips. Uh, touring pedal boards are for my wife and children. We, I use uh, racing pedal boards for touring. Like for example, on this trip, this was the Starboard All Star 26 inch that's I think uh, 66 centimeters, very narrow, very fast moving pedal board. It has uh, two disadvantages, obviously. Sometimes you fall into water. If you are on a trip like this one, 35 degrees Celsius, warm water, that's fun to fall into water. But uh, if you go sometime in April and it is maybe snowing or raining, then it is a problem. If you fall into water, you are scared actually to fall. And the second problem, and that's the bigger problem actually, is uh, with, with these uh, racing pedal boards on rivers, is that you spend a lot of energy balancing the pedal board. The lateral stability topic is a big one because uh, it you are wasting a lot of energy just in order to keep standing on the pedal board. So this is an obvious disadvantage, uh, but it uh, also comes down to how much experience you have. And uh, uh, it can be improved uh, with some special fin design, like, uh, you know, I attached a secondary US fin box and I manufactured my own one meter long uh, fin which helps with stability a lot and it helps with tracking as well so uh, that's also a consideration that uh, i'm using super narrow racing pedal boards for touring trips on flowing rivers up to white water class one and if you don't want to fall into water you can have a chair you can simply sit down have a two two-sided double-sided pedal like on a kayak 
and that works fine if if the rapids are even bigger you can sit even lower not on a chair but directly on the pedal board of course it can get wet it can get cold but you, you can have special clothing and uh, once all this is settled uh, once you manage to stand up and uh, go through the rapids and so on on the racing pedal board the amount of glide you are getting is phenomenal this is exactly like a road bicycle the road bicycle makes you suffer it really makes you shake and suffer but when you pedal it wants to go it moves it jumps forward and this is the same case on racing pedal boards if I shall compare the glide of the Starboard Touring DSE pedalboard and Tumbo Discovery, I would go with Starboard Touring, uh, the one with the better glide, even though I have to say that on this particular trip uh, I cannot really assess it. Uh, first of all, this uh, assessment needs laboratory conditions. And not just uh, like myself and, and anyone else uh, just shares the perception of the glide the glide actually should be measured but i cannot do it and on this trip on this river the, uh, it is very difficult to measure the glide because the speed of the river changes and because there is also some massive headwind so this is really hard to measure but i can tell about the starboard touring that uh, it is only slightly slower than and the racing pedal board so if i go on the racing pedal board and my wife goes on starboard touring pedal board she is slower just a bit and i think <clears throat> compared to tumbo discovery starboard has a better outline for glide uh, it has hydrodynamic shape it is wide in front and narrow in the back it has just one fin uh, which has less drag than three fins on tumbo so I would guess uh, the glide is slightly better on a starboard touring DSC. This comparison of the two pedal boards took a surprising turn uh, when we managed to break the fin on starboard. Uh, remember starboard has the big fin, uh, which is very durable. I like it a lot, but it is true that I broke two this year already. Uh, on this video, and this is the Tambo, they have three fixed uh, unbreakable plastic fins, they are around 10 cm each, and um, it depends on the river, uh, if you need, well, the, the overall formula is that you need to have the pedal board as narrow as possible so that it is fast, so that it has good glide. Uh, but you need help with lateral stability of the board and a wide deep running fin helps with stability it needs to go deep it, it, it's not just a matter of the overall surface area of uh, the fin of or all of or <laughs> sorry or of all the fins together but uh, what matters is how deep they go and on tumbo they don't go deep they're just 10 centimeters deep but on a river like Viosa in Albania or any other fast flowing river uh, you would often go not quite straight like here on this video you can see that I'm ready I'm getting ready for the curve which is ahead of me so I go slightly sideways uh, once I get into the curve I can just pedal and go quickly out of the curve and if the water gets too low and you have this amount of speed uh, in which you are approaching the curve and you have the big wide fin like on starboard you can break it because you apply the pressure from the side not from the front this is this this is important if you apply pressure from the front the starboard fin lasts forever but if you apply pressure from the side you can break it and this is this is the magic moment in which uh, the approach of tambo excels if you have low water and uh, the water flows uh, very fast the three fin uh, design is better because uh, you cannot break it you you go less deep into water you're not catching stones or uh, the mud and uh, you will not break them and this actually this was a turnaround on the trip because before starboard 
was more stable, had better glide, more straight line, much better straight line tracking. It was doing well, but then we broke the fin and uh, immediately Tambo became the favorite. And uh, so actually the conclusion shall be that it matters on the river. If you have fast flowing river, uh, you need to have unbreakable fin fins which don't go too deep and on the other hand if you have a deep water like a lake, a sea or a deep river uh, bigger deeper running fin is much better because it helps uh, with lateral stability and it has better straight line tracking so uh, there is no you know like one winner uh, it depends on the conditions The material of starboard, which is here on the left side, seems to be a bit stiffer. Uh, it's hard to show on video, but you have to apply some pressure in order to move it. And Tambo here feels a bit softer. softer. This maybe also explains why Tambo seems to be a little bit more lightweight. Uh, when it comes to durability, I have no concerns. Uh, uh, it would be too early to, to say that the stiffer material holds longer uh, because I know that Tambo users uh, are riding uh, white water class 3 and 4 and there don't seem to be that many or there's, I, 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 I'm not aware of any warranty claims so I'm not saying that the softer material lasts uh, shorter but it is a noticeable difference. Tambo provides this rope for fastening your pedal board once it is deflated uh, it's a brand new product uh, it's not really useful it would be nice if they provided something like this uh, with which you can properly tie together the pedal board and once uh, the pedal board is inflated anywhere on the water you can attach it to the front of the pedal board and when you go on the on the river bank you can pull uh, the pedal board by this and you can tie it up to a tree or to a fence somewhere if you go out of the water so it would be used in two different ways and by the way uh, just like airboard does it it could also be recycled as a uh, shoulder strap Here is another idea or recommendation. I personally don't use the elastic bungee, bungee straps. Uh, if you happen to, if you are in the river and you happen to turn around the pedal board, uh, you need to quickly turn it back and the elastic bungees just stretch and don't let you turn the board around. Uh, also, when you, uh, when there is a dam and you need to portage around the dam, uh, the elastic bungee straps don't hold the baggage well so conclusion uh, they don't work in the water and they don't work outside of the water I never use uh, elastic bungee straps I always remove them from the pedal boards uh, and I use um, uh, these uh, ropes or how is it called uh, the best one is from Tatonka, 1.5 meters long. You need uh, to make, or it's good to make a, a knot uh, in the D ring uh, that that helps you. Then then you can tighten it, tighten it, tighten it up with just one hand, and then I do also a second knot at the end so that the rope doesn't go out of uh, of the lock completely. So one hand operation fixed. Nothing is elastic. It works perfectly in the water and out of the water. I would suggest put a action camera mount here to turn the handle across because when the load or when the baggage is not balanced you need to move your hand left and right in order to balance it. So folks I hope you found the review useful and thanks for watching. Bye bye.